What? Sponsored by that game. Everyone. Five minutes ago. Sponsored by that game. 50 minutes, dude. We're not watching that. That is ridiculous. This is like a fucking documentary. No, this is too crazy. What's it about? Scientists are racing to unlock the secrets of the cosmos. Questions we once thought impossible to answer are within our grasp. Speed. Where does the sun go at night? Champion. Is math related to science? If the universe is so big, then why won't it fight me? As we look further into the universe, we see light from distant stars, eons old, perhaps hundreds, even thousands of miles away. Hold on, can I get a zoom in on that? You bet I can. This is one of the world's most powerful telescopes. Watch Initiating this. six times zoom. You've never seen such a video. Can this baby do seven? I can do you one better. Maneuvering to eight times zoom. Pressure rising, holding steady. I can see it. Unblur. It won't hold. Get me 8.5 times. You're a madman. Upscale it to 4K. The helium tanks will go critical. Opening the blinds. Hold it steady. Uncropping and increasing aspect ratio. Now, punch it. There it is. Life on another world. And to think, we owe it all to one indie development studio. Hello Games. Sure. Let's start at the beginning. Yeah, it's rewind time. Okay, the year is 2009, Guildford, England. There's a man named Sean Murray, and he's just founded a company called Hello Games. Sean and the boys are working hard on a brand new IP called Joe Danger. 2010 AD, the game just came out. It's a success. They're a small team, but really? they are ambitious. Let's do something bigger, said Sean. Let's reach for the stars. How about Joe Danger 2? Brilliant. It's 2012. Joe Danger 2 has just come out. No! But uh, that one doesn't perform as well. We need to do something even bigger than Joe Danger 2. Joe Danger no 3? Man's Sky. No, no. No Man's Sky. Even more out of this world. Something no man has Slow done Kiwi, before. But Castlevania. Uh, two? Joe Danger Kay. the mobile nice game? Yes! And that came out in 2014. Seriously, guys, biggest thing you can think of. Uh, I'm just a stock image, dude. Why don't you think of something? Sean pondered for a moment, then turned and looked wistfully into the mirror. Reflected back was the visage of Neil deGrasse Tyson. If you're going to make a space game, first person, it's never been done before. How about that? I'm going up in orbit to repair the Hubble telescope. Mm. So that's not a knife. Who are you going to have sex with? How much microwaves are coursing through your body now? <laughs> <laughs> the planet, said Murray. Hmm? Uh, space game. Procedural generation. Okay, space pretty boring. Planet. Okay, that sounds good. Yes, yes, we all agree. So they set to work, cobbled together a prototype, and by VGX 2013, they are ready to announce another new IP. No, no Man's Man. Sky. Check it out, check it out. Oh, this is special. Oh my gosh! This is special! Yes, yes, yes. No! I mean, the trails were good. It's 2014, and it's E3 hype time. No Man's Sky has promised to be a game like no other. A practically boundless experience, vibrant with life and color and things to explore. I wonder how much it's cost to present a game over You'll there. You'll have to be the E3. one to discover it. 
And then, wow, look at that big f***ing dinosaur, holy shit. And a moment later, we're in space, having a battle amongst a giant fleet. Claim a planet as your own. Explore the galaxy with your friends. Okay, that's it. This is going to be the best game ever, you guys. It even won awards for its hype. And it will release in June 2016. Uh -oh. The hype train was officially loading up and ready to chug out of the station. Oh, no, no, no. At every stop of the journey, there would be press junkets talking about the amazing scale of the game. Spread across 18 quintillion planets, it's so vast that by the time you finish exploring it all, I would have two new videos published. Sean himself was doing the interviews, because who is better to talk about the game than the lead guy himself? He went from interview to interview, and with each question, the answers he gave raised people's expectations of the game's scope. Can you land on a comet? Yeah, at the moment you can land on asteroid. You could encounter other players. Can you grief other players? <laughs> a little bit. They're literally building your own like massively multiplayer world that's procedurally right. generated. Sand planets like in June, rivers, walking sentinels, hacking. <laughs> So sophisticated that light diffracts <laughs> through the <laughs> atoms, they had to redevelop the whole periodic table to make it work. What? Even Elon Musk was hyped for it. Two years go by. It's early 2016, and that hype train is really moving now. Perhaps one of the biggest in video game history. Reddit no. was shoveling most of the game of fuel. Skeptics and naysayers are treated as ballast and thrown from the carriage doors. <laughs> Pre-orders open, and they are doing very well. The date is booked in. Some are even taking the day off work. So much hype there is that... Uh-oh. Jason Schreier of the soon-to-be-defunct Kotaku is about to spoil the party. He announces a delay. From June 2016 to August. Oh my god! Liar, the incensed audience cries. Please be quiet, they said. And death threats Ninja. too. But he was 100% right. A week later, the delay is officially announced. Ooh, sorry lads, we need more polish, said Sean in his usual accent. To that, Sean received some death threats too, by the way. Although he didn't take them as seriously or go to the police. Yet. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. But the impatient crowd relaxed a bit and said, Fine, we will wait. But we expect a level of polish no man has ever seen. <laughs> Speaking of waiting... Shadow Man here. Have you heard of Ray Shady? My wife died in a plane crash. Hey, hey. let's get serious for a moment. Raid isn't just a game with 15 million downloads in the last six months. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Think differently. Play Raid... differently. Achieve your... dreams. I'm sorry, sir. You've contracted... RAIDS! That's good! Congratulations! It's Gorgorub of the Undead Horde. My life for Nessu! You've just collected one of over 400 champions. Why, hello there. Have you heard about the online RPG PvP? <laughs> it's extremely well reviewed on the Play Store! <laughs> oh. You remind me of my wife. Raid is more than just a game. It's a reassuring pat on the back from your dad. It's a warm bowl of soup on a cold night. It's one last dance at your wife's funeral. If you haven't played in the arena yet, I'm gonna break into your house. You're all getting Raid for Christmas, kids. Yay! And if you download now, kids, using the link in the description below. You can get an extra 50k silver and an epic champion. Wow, wow you're, you're the best, the best dad, dad, ever. dad ever. Wait, mom's dead? Braid Shadow Legends. Add over. So let's talk about the team in charge of all that polishing. It's small, tiny. In fact, I haven't been able to find a smaller team behind a AAA release. All of these expectations are on the shoulders of just six people, expanding to a team of 15 by the end of production. Oh God. July. It's just a couple of weeks until the release date. Whatever the state of the game by now, however much it's finished, that's what's going out. 
The Hello Games team celebrates with this iconic image. The quintessential soy face. They're exhausted. Look at what video game production does oh, to a man. God, what's wrong with your face? Nonetheless, oh, okay, they dude. continue working on the day one patch. And, uh-oh. Sean, if your game isn't coming out for another two weeks, then why is there a box copy on eBay? That's right. It's a leak. Someone broke the embargo and is selling early access to the highest bidder. What? And the bids start rolling in. It reaches $1,300 US. Sold oh, to some guy with the Reddit handle Damien. He gets his hands on it and starts uploading footage to chat. YouTube and Daily Mail. Okay, chat. Think about it. You, you, it. This should be way higher. You can literally make a career off of buying this. You can make a YouTube, get leaked footage, make make a new account, and, and then you can grow your brand from that, dude. It's okay. crazy. What? You can mash the, the fuck out of it. Sean and Sony. Damien finished it a lot quicker than expected, but he gave it a decent review. There are things I don't like, there are things I like, but at the end of the day, when I say to myself, what is this game supposed to be? This, what I'm looking at of right here, no this shit. is what the game is supposed to be. He I, noted I, a I, few I, problems, irrelevant. but said he was optimistic that they would be ironed out with the day one patch. Uh, Sean? It's another leak. Some retailers broke the official release date. Journalists too, and they started streaming playthroughs of the game. What? What the? Fuck? What the fuck? Sony tried to DMCA all these videos, but their aim was terrible. Round of applause, everyone. We've officially become No Man's Censored by Sony. Our new story from earlier this week about No Man's Sky leaks has been hit with a copyright strike on YouTube. They went bumbling around okay. the platform, just what? taking down any what video they about that on the official about site, the or showed the trailer footage. Shut the fuck up! But it was too late. The footage had people talking more skeptically about the game. Especially because there were no early review copies. That's bad. And it was looking like the weight of all these expectations had become too much. And the whole thing was about to give. Oh no. It's August. Everyone's here. We've all bought the game and we're fucking hyped. Uh. Here we go, lads. Oh dear lord, um. it isn't finished. Uh, hello, Sean. It is me, the auditor of games. <laughs> I used to work at an astronomy lab. Don't worry about that. It seems like you've made a lot of promises. Promises that uh, you have not kept. Let's go through the checklist. Have you got any large-scale joinable space battles? Nobody Todd would want that. Uh, ringed planets? Uh, no. No. Fine. Well, at least let me play as a trader. Some may call this junk. Me, I call them. Uh, no. Those sand planets from June look nice. Think I might. <laughs> Please, Sean. There must be rivers. No, no, it's no, it's not. Animals what? interact with each other in the environment. Uh, no, no. Packs of walking sentinels, Sean. No. I'm literally crying right now. Should I even ask whether I can play as a space pirate? No. Factions with different attributes. You picked the wrong house, fool! Oh! Fly between star systems manually. But nobody's actually done it yet. If I can maneuver like in the trailer, I'll still be happy. No. Well, day night cycles determined by the Wasn't orbit that bad? of the sun. Yeah. Really? Uh, no. no. Land on an asteroid, radio chat, and name your ship, hacking, portals. All that stuff about the elements, Sean. Uh, no. This is not good, Sean. This is very not good. And ironically, the only bugs this game doesn't have are the butterflies in the demo. Um... Buried buildings, aggressive emojis, tractor beam malfunctions, animal husbandry, oil slick world, raining grass, retarded animals doing retarded things. Ships interiors disappear, first person mode as a gun. That's not how flying works. That's my only means of transportation, leaving the planet. Take off. Really take off. Holes in the map. Holes in my graphics card. Whole lot of nothing from down here. Holy Texture's shit. bugging out. Animals bugging out. Animals break dance. Look at these busy, busy hands. Hello Love there. It. And a couple of unrequested ejectors. This is worse than Atlas. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, that's a lot of stuff. I get the picture. No wait, poor graphics rendering, some can't even start the game, frame rate issues, constant crashes, major publications are having trouble playing the game on their machines, even the best 1080 Ti's are stuttering, alt tabbing, that's a guaranteed crash, desktop <laughs> notifications, that's a crash, playing the game, that's a crash, changing options in the game without restarting, you'll get this. And if you got the pre-order version with the bonus spaceship, you might have a problem. Your special ship already comes with a hyperdrive inside it. Great, right? No, you can't do the because you have to craft it in order to finish the tutorial missions. I fucking knew it. And if you haven't finished the tutorial missions, you can't leave the star system. So whoops, until they patch it, you're stranded. That's why I give my kids No Man's Sky. The fool! <laughs> Ah, my ship's in bits! Okay, thank you. Just a quick note about how high expectations were for this game, and just how many people bought it on release. Biggest Myself PS4 launch ever, everyone. Over three quarters of a million purchases on Steam at launch. It's the single best-selling game on the PlayStation Store that month. And the large proportion of people who bought it in the hopes of playing with their friends... Well, you're in for a surprise. You can't. This one is a literal game changer. Is it even possible to meet up with your friends in No Man's Sky? The answer is absolutely yes, it's possible. On multiple occasions, Sean said it was definitely in the game. Will you be able to play with your friends? Yeah. Can you run into other people, other players on the game? Yes. But then just before the release, Sean posted this cryptic tweet. To be super clear, No Man's Sky is not a multiplayer game. Please don't go in looking for that experience. Oh, what? So there's no multiplayer function. Wait, is that But then the next us? line contradicts that. Because the chances of two players ever crossing paths in a universe this big is pretty much zero. Oh, so it is multiplayer. You just have to overcome this finding each other hurdle. So you're telling me there's a chance. There's no one yeah! ever in the game, right? Ch there's no, no one ever in the game, it's right? It's confusing than that. Because the box doesn't mention online zero play, possibility. just network features. And the collector's edition had its online play icon stickered over. So customers are going, which one is it, Sean? Just tell us if it has multiplayer or it doesn't have multiplayer. Sean wouldn't give any answers. But yeah, after hundreds does, but... of thousands of purchases, people soon took it upon themselves to find out. The Despite the claims really that it would be so the improbable. That are incredibly rare, just because of the size of the On the very first day, two people noticed they were only four star systems from one another, and they met up on the same planet in a live stream. Oh dear. A black pillar. Our, yeah, our streams are, are exactly lined up. If you go look at my stream, we're looking at the exact same area right now if you don't move. Yep, that's the same spot. It... And they can't see each other. I'm alone! That settles it. It's not not multiplayer because it's so big. It's not multiplayer because it's just not fucking multiplayer. And this led to quite Jesus. a revolt. What did Sean have to say about all this? So amazing, two people found each other on the first day. That has blown Mind. my mind. So why can't we see other players in game? Wow, so many of you playing. Yeah, Sean, but what? Truly amazing. My mind is blown. So what's the game actually like then? Is it any good? That is a difficult thing to say. Well, it certainly is stylish and pretty. And there are a lot of places to explore. But that doesn't mean there's much to find. In fact, the game boils down to a very simple loop. Hold down the trigger to pick up resources, deal with a full inventory, get an upgrade, leave the planet, that go to another annoying. planet. Hold down the trigger, deal with a full inventory, get an upgrade, leave the planet, go to another planet. Hold down the trigger, deal with a full inventory, leave the planet, go to another planet, deal with a full inventory, get an upgrade, leave the planet, go to another planet. That's it. Sixty dollars, ladies and gentlemen. Refuel your multi-tool, refuel your life support, refuel a separate part of your multi-tool that shoots bullets instead of the mining beam, refuel your launch thrusters. It's busy work that makes it look like you have something to do. It's not real. How dare you? 
<laughs> what followed was one of the most dramatic crashes in player numbers in gaming history. Sales in the UK fell by 81% in the second shit. week. Concurrent players on Steam dropped from 212,000 in August to just over 2,000 by September and fewer than 1,000 by October. <laughs> and what followed that was perhaps the biggest pylon in gaming history. Reviewers on YouTube panned the game. Oh, for fuck's sake! You done fucked it up! I had no <laughs> hype. And I can tell you that, even without that disappointment, this game is hot garbage. Has anyone coined Sean Mourinho yet? Numerous times within the first two hours of the game, I kept saying, this is it, fuck this shit. Reviewers in the media were almost as harsh. Devastating realization we'll that most later. of the crafting, combat, and other activities you do on and between those planets ranges between bemusing and outright bad. The criticism was deafening. And a lot of it really funny and creative. Kroby Cat made a video that captured the sentiment of that day. And if you haven't seen it yet, you're missing out. So people are furious. The game is boring. And soon people discover that complaining about the game is actually more fun than playing it. Wait, I'm now three and a half hours into the tutorial pretty much. So they started complaining about it like they were grinding for an achievement. This sucks. Fucking Minecraft in space. Many people made compilations of all the unfulfilled <laughs> yes, promises. Like little... One guy on the subreddit compiled a big list of all the missing features. Front page. Got a defense for No Man's Sky? Enjoy your downvote. In fact, the entire No Man's Sky subreddit was in such disarray it had to be locked. <laughs> so by the end of the month, Metacritic was like scrolling through a bowl of Cheerios. By October, it was one of the worst rated games on Steam, with an aggregate of mostly negative from more than 70,000 reviews. That's The outrage crazy. of the game was headline news for weeks on dozens of games news publications. And the price on eBay and Amazon and secondhand at GameStop was crashing through the floor. A dollar? Oh, please, no more. But what? the beatings had only just begun. The demo planet was data mined and found to be, of course, totally scripted and not randomly generated at all. I've just got to pick one of these at random. If anything horrible goes wrong, just keep in mind that I've not been here before. It wasn't some level that we built or something like that, even though I think it looks quite nice in places. People watching this would wonder why you're showing this area again. Like, what's so special about demoing the game on this planet? Oh, no, no, it's just a place that looks nice. Nope. Bad Murray. I could have ended the demo. Damn, you with, called them out, dude. Some, Holy shit. You know, pre-scripted crazy thing that would happen. You know what I mean? The normal thing of like, and then a monster emerges from behind the mountains, you know? I don't remember seeing that. That got me hyped. People see what's going on with the game and feel lied to. This is false advertising, they say, and angry customers start scoping out a lawsuit. On September Wait, 28th, why? the ASA busts through the door and goes, Yep, too many complaints. We're going to investigate. But then soon after, the ASA cleared them of any legal wrongdoing. Technically, the only thing they're interested in is what's on the back of the box, what's on the store page, and what's on the Steam page. So it's technically not true. false advertising. But of course, technically not illegal doesn't mean much to an angry audience. October 28th, Hello Games Twitter is hacked. The hacker posts, No Man's Sky was a mistake, and is shitting on the game in the replies. Turns out Sean didn't use two-factor authentication on his LinkedIn, and that's how they got in. They also sent discrediting emails to journalists, which they knew would rile people up if published. Some people even show up to their offices to take photos and knock on the door, even at night and on the weekend. They posted empty pictures of the office, so naturally out of context, this started rumors that Hello Games simply took the money and ran. Okay, that's also weird this though. This in addition to numerous bomb and death threats during that period. Those ones Sean did have to take seriously. Uh, regular intervention from police and Scotland Yard and things like that. And while Sony didn't quite throw them under the bus, it was more like a gentle push under a minivan when Sony president Shohei Yoshida admitted that Hello Games did not have a great PR strategy for No Man's Sky. The press took the ball with that one and ran. But despite all of this, all of the negative press, they were actually nominated for a couple of awards. But by this point, Murray and the other members of Hello Games were so downtrodden and so sure they weren't going to win that they opted to go elsewhere for dinner. And, and the innovation award goes to No Man's Sky. <laughs> this lovely 
Holy trophy going once. Whoops. I'm going to accept this on the, uh, behalf of Hello Games and congratulations to them. And then I'm going to walk off stage like I planned. Wait, the whole aren't thing. you supposed to send somebody if you By can't this point, attend? You've got to feel just a little bit sorry for them. And then what followed that was the final straw for many. No particular incident. That's kind of an asshole issue, not at least incident. send like a decoy I did. Silence. Over three months of not a damn word from No Man's Sky. Where are they? Where is my refund? Where is Murray? Shouted into the void. Murray's in the Bahamas, then. The game was over. And it was dead. Murray's in Belize or some shit, dude. And, and the bar beds or some shit. The year is 2000 AD. Sean has just graduated from university and is headed into the big wide world. He rises up the ranks at a number of studios. Redemption Archer. Eventually working as a technical lead for Black and technical director for Burnout 3. When Burnout's developer is bought by EA, he is in his late 20s. And he and three of his buddies decide to leave and start their own studio. Hello Games. This was a risky venture. Uh, so we'd done this incredibly foolish thing of like quitting our jobs and then we had to sit down and try and decide what the game was going to be. Together they create their first title, Joe Danger. They work on this game day and night. In fact, even once they were arrested in their own office because the police thought they were there to rob the place because who would be working at 11 p.m. on a Sunday night? But they had to work that hard. Like any startup, it was a huge what financial fuck, and professional risk. They had no income. They were working in a tiny room above an old tile shop, living off savings. And to keep the project running, Sean even sold his house. So we made a really tough and probably, at the time, seemed really foolish decision. Um, it's kind of almost embarrassing for me to talk about. Uh, I sold my house and just basically went all in and, and funded what we were doing, which is not something I would recommend anyone else do. But by June 8th, 2010, they had done it. The game was good. And they could breathe a sigh of relief because on the very first day it hit the PlayStation Store, they made their money back. Two years later, Joe Danger 2 was released. Oh, it was that? not the commercial success they had hoped for, and they didn't want to just keep pumping out sequels. That was a trap big players in the industry had fallen into. In his spare time, Sean started working on a prototype for a procedurally generated game. They okay, took another okay, game. Chat, chat. Side topic, dude. Okay, for 10 seconds, dude. Listen. Call of Duty are a bunch of fucking assholes, dude. Even though their, game, their old games are still in the Steam store, they're still at fucking full price for no reason. If you want to go play your, your old games from your childhood, you have to pay 80, 90, 140 bucks, 180 bucks. I, why? I don't get it. So in his spare haunted. time, Sean started working on a prototype for a procedurally generated game. They took another gamble and scrambled to get a trailer out in time to present at VGX 2013. So the project is official now, and the pressure is on. Around this time, Sean is also looking to start a family. Concurrent to all this development, he would go on to have three kids. What? So the weight of responsibility is really piling on. But their hard work will pay off, three as they're finally going to have a chance for some R&R &R around Christmas. They woke up to find their homes flooded, their cars submerged, and their plans for Christmas Day very much ruined. Bad news. Rain. Rain and flooding in the south of England, right around the Hello Games office. They are completely inundated and they return from their holidays to find laptops floating around at waist height. But some good news. They hadn't lost any data. So they pull together. Soldier on. Development continues. So there they are, working in a damp office, and then, ding dong, 
Ooh, who's at the door? It's Danish mathematician Dr. Johan Gerlis. He's seen the game, and he says, They are using my super formula in perfect English, and there is a potential for a lawsuit. Sean what? says they didn't, and he could prove it. So they have a meeting, and the claim is eventually dropped. Lawsuit evaded. So, back to work, guys. Ding dong. It's Sky Television. They've seen the game. You are infringing on our Sky trademark. They said in perfect text-to-speech. They had succeeded in getting Microsoft to change SkyDrive to OneDrive, and they were about to give gamers No Man's One under threat of lawsuit. But this lawsuit didn't just go away. The threat loomed over them for the next three years, right up until the month before release. So they get back to work and ding dong. It's that is Sony ridiculous. with some good news for once. We like a game, kid. We want to feature it front and center and make you a big star. This could mean millions of dollars in additional revenue. They said, yeah. But along with it, a lot of press for this game would need to be done. Being a small team, they didn't have anyone for PR. They had their designers, they had their developers, and that was about it. So it's up to Murray. Uh, the, chat, I'm pausing. I'm doing it. Okay, we're back, boys. Sorry about that. Oh. Sean's in his early 30s now. Not super young, but relatively young and inexperienced for this type of media circuit. This deal with Sony put extra pressure on them. It set deadlines. It's not that it's Sony's fault, but they're locked in now with much less flexibility. So when May rolls around and they have no option but to delay, even if they wanted to ask for an extra 6 to 12 months of development, which they really need, it's probably too much to ask for. So they extend from late June to August. Only six weeks. From here, you can predict what's going to happen to multiplayer and a bunch of other promised features. Let's go. So here's how the hype happened. Scope of game. Time. And here's the line which shows the reality of development. Progress is steady and ends in August 2016. Now here is the line of player <laughs> oh, no, expectations. No, no. It should start out here and follow along the purple. But the overhyping trailer comes out and puts us way up here. This is special. In this trailer, it features a bunch of things that Hello Games thinks they're capable of having in the game by 2016. That's the first big mistake. Then it's announced for PlayStation and it costs $60 and there's a collector's edition. Second, even bigger mistake. That puts us all the way up here. And I think this is the main problem because price tags set expectations. For a $60 game, this was seriously barren and disappointing. Now, if they had put it out for $20 as an indie game or an alpha, no problem. Tarkov probably. But when they gave it the AAA treatment, people rightfully aligned their expectations with Wait. other games in that category. That is the main reason customers' expectations were so skewed. Then Murray went to interviews, exacerbating the problem. Every time he mentioned a feature in the game, even in passing, fans set their expectations to AAA heights for that feature. Now, some people think the interviews are the main problem. In my humble opinion, not so much. Most people never saw these interviews. It's not that rickety 12-foot <sighs> ladder Sean's standing on that's the main problem. It's the 900-foot building he's perched it on <laughs> in the first place. So the obvious solution here would be an official statement. Hey guys, look, don't expect a 10 out of 10. Expect more of a 5 out of 10. No, the publisher just sank an enormous investment of marketing and opportunity into the game. What's wrong with you? And that would be a huge <laughs> middle finger to them. The publisher isn't going to make you hype the shit out of your game, but you can't talk it down either. So, he's kind of stuck up there. In some ways, during the interview, he tries to temper expectations, but it's limited. Can you build a space station? No. But let's not gloss over the interviews. Sean is a technical guy. He's a developer. He's also the introverted type. And the big lights and the stuff on camera does not come naturally to him. Is it super nerve-wracking to talk on stage at E3? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. I personally find going on stage at E3 like the hardest thing I've ever done. That's something really? that 
I would have had in a nightmare before. You know what I mean? It's literally the hardest did. thing you've ever done. Yeah, yeah. Still, he stepped up and took interviews for his game from 2013 to 2016. And the main thing people wanted to hear about were the features. Can you have more of them? So every planet, will there be wormholes? Right. At what point? Do you Chat. get, you get, Chat. I think I went on a stage, like the earlier you fail, the better it is. Because if you fail once, right? Yeah, okay, dude. It's like my screen's already scratched. Ah, fuck you, whatever happens, next happens, you Wait, know? Or anything? From these interviews, people took Sean to be a liar a Peter Molyneux or a chess club member out to sell his game at whatever reputational cost. But I think the truth is more complicated than that. Sean and the team are indie developers working on a new IP. Their project and plans are constantly in flux. They have no idea how large chunks of the game are going to look, especially not a couple of years out from release. And crucially, Sean doesn't understand that something mentioned in 2013 even said in passing, is going to be seen as a promise in the year 2016, even if by then you've decided to cut it from the game. For example, orbiting around the sun. Today has turned to out because the planet has actually rotated on its axis. This originally was in the game, but it caused the player too much confusion. It kept being reported as a bug in the beta, as people left the planet and then returned to find everything different. But nonetheless, into the line compilation it goes. So while they're still essentially formulating the game, the media all want a piece of Sean and to report on features first. Conversely, Sean thinks the reporters might help him to temper down things by emphasizing that Hello Games is an indie studio. But that is not how journalism is done. This is how journalism is done. Uh -oh. Can you customize the look of your character? The... Sort of. Full customization confirmed in No Man's Sky. Okay, that's true then. Periodic table to create atmospheric particles that would diffract light at just the right wavelength. Oh, no, I told you. The press kind of operates downstream from the community because things are click driven as to what stories you get served and things like that. But a rumor would surface from Reddit straight to the front page. There's all this hype, and the project has increased in scope dramatically and keeps increasing as the months go by until a point. They are close to the deadline and have to delay, and the reality of what they can achieve in the little time remaining is staring them in the face. They know they're not going to be putting out a finished game. They're worried. There's nothing more they can do. And the fear that they will disappoint the audience is growing on Sean and the team. Um, I, I worry about, like, disappointing people. Upon release, all of these clips are seen as proof that Sean is a liar. And what doesn't help is his body language. I mean, it's kind True. of the body language of someone who is lying. And this is why I mentioned he's an introvert. Remember, he's a technical lead. Actually, a really good one. But not a salesman. Cut him just a little bit of slack, because this is simply how he talks. Here are some innocuous questions, and he answers them honestly. How left? Not much. Uh, lead producers on uh, No Man's Sky? Yeah, I guess I'm a I'm a developer on it. I suppose the, uh, <laughs> yeah, creator or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I I really like making games. I don't necessarily love talking about it. <laughs> <making games. laughs> I think you did a good even, job. Even Sean, though, even you know, you guys are very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, seriously. Same okay. body language. And Jesus Christ, they have him up on stage and in front of cameras and bright lights and on the goddamn Colbert Report. Try keeping a nerve on that. Nonetheless, free of that context, the clips have him cemented in the community as a liar. So the graph plays out what right is that and that graph, it's actually a track. And that track is what the hype train runs on. So it comes barreling up the hill. Instead of neatly pulling into the station, it comes crashing right through the roof. The disaster unfolds. They are absolutely shit on. So there were Sean and Hello Games, surrounded by the rubble of their former reputation. Punish Sean was at his lowest point, hated by the majority of the gaming community. But they were still alive, and they had made tens of millions of dollars. They were that left much? with two choices. 
take the money, start a new project, and be a pariah. A cautionary tale of the industry and hated by the gaming community forever. Or, pick themselves up, get back to work, and with potentially no profit motive, finish the game. It allowed me to do something that I've always done in difficult times, whether it was crappy bosses that I've dealt with before or crappy situations at school growing up. I got my head down, I sat in front of a computer, and I made games, which is what I enjoy. They picked number two. So, they did. here's the plan. The team is assigned to fixing bugs and the most obvious problems. Go. Sean tells the team to stop reading all the overwhelmingly negative feedback on the game, and he reroutes all of it to his personal devices. Emails, forum posts, Google News alerts, player feedback, it's all going directly to him now. Then he starts breaking that down into data sets. People who haven't bought the game, people who have bought it and played it for a hundred hours, people who have returned it, etc. Then he starts compiling those complaints into usable data, focusing on the people with the most sincere experience of the game. That's pretty then we start smart. making a big laundry list of all the things that need adding and prioritizing. First thing to fix That's what is that game requests and support. complaints. Then community mod support. Then a third thing, etc, etc. This is going to take an enormous amount of work to pull off, and they're not going to make the same mistake twice. So they would need to sharply adjust their PR strategy. Anything they said right now, an admission of guilt, I've made a severe, would be met with criticism. Denial, it's not that bad, would be met with criticism. Corporate speak, well, we endeavored to make the best game we could and we are proud of what we have, would be met with criticism. Half of the problems have been caused by speaking too much. So they were going to do a complete 180. Instead of adding more fuel to the fire, Instead of accidentally promising fixes that might also not be delivered, they it's wouldn't desirable. speak to the press again. Female traits you're talking about, I'd say that's a generalization, but you... <laughs> they were going to speak to the community directly from now on. So they told the audience they were working on it and went completely silent. One day passed. No word. Two days. A week. Have you heard from Hello Games? They just had this disastrous release. Nope, haven't seen them. I hope they're working on the game. Two weeks. Dude, are you working on this thing? Just ignore them, just work. Three weeks. Okay, what the fuck is going on? WTF, it's locked. A month. What? They took the fuck money and ran, didn't they? Didn't say anything, it's not gonna help. Two months. Three months. <laughs> By now, most people were convinced that the game was abandoned. They had made their money. It's all over. Then, after over a hundred days of absolute silence, a tweet. Foundation. The first big patch. It is me, Sean. No, go away, Sean. I am mad at you. It has been too long. But I bring you gifts accent sucks. <laughs> it brought base building, new game modes, farming, caps, and freighters, as well as a lot of bug fixes. You will have to try harder than that, Sean, to win my love back. It still fell well shy of the promised game. Too little, too late. So Sean left, returned to his team, and got back to work. A few Again. months went by, and then another tweet. Pathfinder. What do we have here? What the fuck? Oh, it's usual. I bring you online base sharing, own multiple starships, starship specialization, multi-tool specialization and classes, permadeath modes, vehicles you can drive around in, and create racetracks for them too with time trials. Look at this. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty good, but I'm still mad, and there's still a ton promised that isn't in the game yet. So Sean went away once more. A few more months went by. Oh, Jesus! Not, not. Oh, it's you, Sean. What is it now? I bring you an overhaul to the storyline. 
new worlds, crashed freighters, space combat, terrain editing, portals, procedural mission system, interstellar trading, and joint exploration. By now, people were really starting to warm to No Man's Sky again, and to Hello Games. The game has in many ways exceeded what was promised. It's a substantially better game now. <laughs> no Man's Sky is back, Boo. baby! People saw this was an honest effort to fix the game, and the number of employees working on it was growing. From a studio of 15 to 25, Sean Murray and Hello Games social media also started becoming more active and engaging with the audience. The subreddit was flourishing once more. The price of the game secondhand on Amazon, eBay, and GameStop was going up. Up or Then a few more months went by. Next, a really big patch. Oh my god! Holy shit! To be super clear, No Man's Sky is not f that. Here's the full and proper multiplayer experience. Ringed planets, third person mode, character customization, a galactic atlas on an external website for the community, vast overhauls to base building and crafting and resources, and it also brought the game to Xbox. In fact, with the release of Next in July 2018, No Man's Sky was the sixth top selling console game for the month. It climbed its way back into Steam's top 10. It reached nearly 100,000 concurrent players. It brought Holy another shit. $24 million across all platforms. Their Steam rating went from mixed to very positive. People were getting back on board in a big way. Uh -oh. But they weren't done yet. Better creatures, weird underwater shit, discoveries in bases and environments and equipment, and it keeps going. New biomes, more diversity, archaeology, more things to discover. By now, Sean and the Gaming Inspector personification of the gaming community had literally patched things up and were making out on the couch. Which was when he released his biggest patch to date of this video. Oh my god, dude! Free VR support. Not a whole other game you have to pay for, like some titles. Overhauls to NPCs, tech trees, base building, streamlined multiplayer, ride animals around. All sorts of stuff that was never promised in the first place. And they're still adding more stuff. Someone at Valve, who was a fan of the game, said to me, what you do now is more important than what you say. There is only one thing that's credible, and that's your actions. In fact, I was so slow to get this video out that they put out another patch the other day. With ship salvaging, ship upgrading, more advanced terrain editing, first-person exocross, improved VR, improved base building and inventory management, and quality of life stuff, it goes on. Is it perfect? Uh, technically, there are still things on this spreadsheet missing. But come on now, we're starting to nitpick. Especially when you compare them to relationships with other games companies. They could have gone the route of Fallout 76, <laughs> Fallout. paywall mods with Fallout oh. first, charging a monthly fee, a downward spiral more and more into pay-to-win scraps released without QA testing. But instead, they never added pay-to-win. They never added microtransactions or paid DLC. They never made VR as a second game. They didn't give up on the game or scale their resources back to do it. They didn't come out and call all gamers entitled. They didn't add loot boxes. They didn't start work on the next big project or sequel. They didn't do much of anything except get back to work. And just like that, the game once panned by critics now had awards rolling in. Your developed star 2019. No Man's Sky. Sean Murray. No Man's Sky next. <laughs> no Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is next. No Man's Sky. And to cap it all off, the subreddit R No Man's Sky The Game even got together and pulled money for a GoFundMe to have a billboard installed near the Hello Games offices. It must have been a harrowing moment for Sean and the team. They took a huge risk to start a small studio. They clawed their way up to create one of the most notable games of the console generation. Disappointed pretty much everyone with the release and took one of the biggest online beatings in video game history for it. As a family post-release, we faced uh, some really difficult challenges. Everything that you can imagine from like the worst of the internet, we hit. But then over the course of the next three years, completely turned it around and came out the other side with a win.
It's the underdog oh. story. And after doing all of this research, I couldn't help but come to the conclusion that they were the good guys. Play IT so what is the future for Hello Games? In 2017, they announced Hello Labs, a support program focused on original titles and games using procedural generation. Two of the team also branched off to work on a small title called The Last Campfire. This is it. For the foreseeable future, they're just working on No Man's Sky. No, Alright, I didn't want to finish the video on like a big sappy note. So, this is the end of the story, but there's still another few minutes. Don't leave. It's not an ad. Okay, in 2015, when the hype was at its peak, someone wrote a Sean Murray erotic fan fiction, And, naturally, I assumed that you lot would want to see it. So, here it is. My evening interview at Hello Games. I arrived at the Hello Games office in the early evening, as the sun was approaching the horizon. Taking a deep breath, I nervously pressed the doorbell. The door <laughs> opened, and Sean poked his expressive okay. face out to greet me. Hey you, he exclaimed in his adorable British-Australian accent. I'm so happy you could make it and spend the evening with us. I was so happy when I heard you agreed to let me come in for an interview, I said. Oh yeah, the interview. I forgot. He replied with his usual brilliant humour. I laughed. <laughs> You're so funny, Sean. Let me show you my office. I have a surprise for you, Sean said. He led me to the room where we sat down on a soft vinyl couch. Okay. So let me show you the surprise, he said, softly. It's the newest build of the game. We just added some new features. He booted up the game on a PS4 in his office. I stared at his face. I, I like your beard. It's sexy, I pretended to say to him in my head to myself. I had a secret crush on him. There was something about his humble demeanor and feeble yet handsome bone structure that was so alluring. So here's the game, he said eagerly. It opened on an alien world just calling out to be explored. I began to sweat. Here it finally was, in front of me in all of its glory, and it was being played by Sean in front of me in all of his glory. I nervously spoke. Could I try playing? I said. Oh, I suppose, of course, he said, chuckling. But another few minutes passed without him handing me the controls. Sean, I said more confidently. I put my hands on his hands as he gripped the controller. Okay, he looked dear. me straight in the eyes. I stared deep into his beautiful glistening eyes, utterly transfixed. Sure, he said. He let go of the PlayStation controller, still sweaty from his firm grip. But I have another surprise to show you. He stood up. Can I My get some well the he muttered. Yes, Excuse please, me. I said, blushing as red, <laughs> blushing as red as the treetops of Aurea Five. He grabbed my shoulders, guiding me confidently towards the coffee table, like he confidently guides the Hello Games team towards the game's release. The one true Sean Murray, not that baby-faced loser asshole poser from NCIS made sweet, sweet love to me. I wasn't sure what I was more excited about. <laughs> finally. Redacted. Sean Murray, all finally playing No Man's Sky. After exploring the planet's surface, I entered my spaceship and took off. Just as I left the atmosphere and burst into the, the breathtaking expanse of space. Redacted. It was an out of world experience. Okay. Oculus Rift support. I'll link the chat. I'll link the video. Which is not in chat. As I turned, I saw Sean's avatar standing before me. In a beautiful, procedurally generated Chai, we're, we're, we're it, Like what you see, we'll he said. It's time, everybody! He shouted. I heard footsteps slowly enter from the cramped office. I soon saw many spacesuits appear before me in game. But as they took off their helmets, I realized that they were all the same Sean Murray avatar. I was about to be redacted by Okay. That's pretty good though. Okay.